Hi there, uh, I just quickly wanted to film uh, an introduction because the video you're about to see um, is a little bit older. I just did not find the time to edit it uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, I had um, a paper due on Friday. Last week I mainly worked on that. I did not do much else. The second thing was that uh, this weekend, uh, on Saturday, friends of mine, my best friend and her boyfriend, uh, they came over and they helped me to build uh, my kitchen. But it took like the whole Saturday, from 8 a.m. in the morning to 11 p.m. Uh, in the evening, we were just building this kitchen and we only got halfway through, so we met on Sunday again um and try to assemble as much as possible without disturbing the neighbors so there are some parts that still need to be done but yeah for the main part it is finished so hopefully i will have a little bit more time on hand uh the following week and the last thing i wanted to address which is actually the most important thing uh of all is the black lives matter movement so i am not american i'm from austria i'm from vienna this is an issue uh, and the matter that is to seen in a worldwide context. I can't really describe how my heart shattered um, when I saw this injustice. I started to look more into the matter to, to watch videos and, um, and I began to feel very ignorant. I felt like I just didn't know enough uh, and I needed to educate myself more. Uh, even though it's not that prominent in Europe, or at least not in Austria, because the black community is way smaller um, than in America, it is still an issue that has to be addressed. I just wanted to say that it's very, very important to speak out against the people that put others down because of their skin color, um, that practice injustice to people because of their skin color. Um, therefore, I... I wanted to take a little bit of time to, to look into the topic a little bit more. There is so much more for me to learn. Austria is not innocent of black racism. There have been stories that horrified me. I think we can improve a lot. Um, this is still our issue as well. Uh, and in that sense, I hope that I am able to, to learn more, um, to be more aware. Well, yeah, this is a very sensitive matter. It's hard for me to find the words to, to talk about it, to be honest. But I still felt like I needed to address this prior to going into this video. And I know that I only have two subscribers uh, who are both my friends. I still felt like uh, putting a video out there without addressing the circumstances that the world is currently in um, didn't feel right. So with that said, I hope that you enjoyed the following video. It may not be relevant anymore, but here it is. Um, so that's all for me. I hope you have a great day. Hi there. Today is the 1st of May. It's not. Today is the 1st of June, so that means that I would love to talk about the books that I read in May. I've been looking forward to do this because this is actually something I really enjoy myself on booktube. For this I need to go on Goodreads, because yeah, I basically don't remember anything. Okay, so the sun is descending, I hope that doesn't disturb anybody. The screen just all of a sudden became really yellowish um, and that will be the case for this video because yeah I just I, I really want to film this today because today is the 1st of June and if I put it off I maybe get in conflict with the books that I read in June you know mm. okay I read about uh, seven books this month this is like the actual physical books that I read this month um, and then there's one audiobook uh, and I am currently uh, almost finished with two other books one of them is uh, Steppenwolf by Hermann Hesse 
And the other one is The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. Uh, the Family Upstairs is an audiobook. Steppenwolf is a physical copy. I'm almost done with those, but I just didn't quite make it until the 31st of May. So that's why they don't count into this wrap up. They will be uh, in my wrap up next month. So I'm going to talk about the books. What what did you expect as a wrap up? Okay, first book that I read this past month is Dracula by Bram Stalker. Um, I put this off for many years. I bought it three years ago, um, never read it. And then all of a sudden the 2020 reading challenges group on Goodreads, you know, um, one that I have the singing in the rain challenge from, uh, decided to put it as a group read for the month of October last year. Yeah, I started it in October and something, something just happened. I don't know what exactly, but when the first storyline ended, the one where Jonathan visits Count Dracula at his castle, um, I got kind of de-interested and I don't know why that is. I think I, I blame the copy for this because this copy is like really narrowly written and there's really no space left in between lines or like the chapters um you know it's just there's no space it's just all bunched up um in like 300 pages and i saw that there were other versions of this book that were about 500 pages long <laughs> and that's exactly how it felt like the time that it took me to turn a page it was it was just a little bit demotivating i think it has nothing to do with the book i ended up giving it four stars i'm glad that i gave it another try and sat down the past month and i started to have a lot of fun after beginning again um and yeah what, what shall i say it's it's a classic People know what it is about, so I don't have to explain that much about the story. Um, yeah, I, I liked it. Oh yeah, one other thing. Um, I have seen that a lot of people were feeling like um, Bram Stoker was beating a dead horse at some point with his story, but I just did not feel this way. Not at all. I felt like every line um, made it move forward. There were definitely, like, it wasn't fast paced, okay? So there was definitely some kind of repetition, but it was a repetition in a way that would move the story forward. Like, it was not simply repeating its storyline, it was also always telling a new part that you just didn't know before. Mm, that's cool, I guess. So, next up, we have GYO by Junji Ito. Um, this is a manga, a horror, horror manga. Um, it is really well drawn. I like the art style a lot. This is actually my first um, book by Junji Ito and it is also my first horror manga. And yeah, maybe somebody can guess who I've got that recommendation from because she's really popular on YouTube and I love her videos. So. I felt, wrong side, have to get used to mangas. So I felt this was really effectively disgusting, but it was not really the kind of horror that I was looking for. I am normally more of the psychological horror type of person and not being horrified by disgust. But what was really surprising to me was that there were some stories, like short stories in the end, that were just there additionally. And the last one, I forgot what it's called. Oh my god, my brain, my, my memory. No, not existent. Okay, there was one story called The Enigma of Amigara Fold. Yeah, this story, amazing. I really, like, it disturbed me so much. It was the horror that I was looking for. I think that Junji Ito is a really talented um, manga drawer like the person that draws mangas. I know there's a word for this. I'm gonna look it up. Um, well, he does that really, really well. 
but for the story crafting itself i felt it was average so let's move on and get to the next book which is alice um by christina henry i think it's just called alice right yeah it's alice the chronicles of alice number one so there's a second book to this and yeah i'm i'm not gonna read the second one because i barely managed to finish the first one something held me to this book and if only it was the desire that i wanted to say that i had read it because this book was pushed into my face um by my bookstore so much <laughs> it was laid out across the whole wall i just I couldn't resist but take a copy with me when the bookstores first opened. Like, I went there on the first day and I, I, I just was in need of buying some books. So I took it because I also felt like I couldn't take any other books. And I was like, okay, maybe I'm going to try this out. Um, and yeah, actually, I wouldn't have bought it if I have had other options that I was happy with. Because something at the cover screamed at me that I wouldn't like it um i gave this two stars uh yeah i actually don't want to vent about this anymore i had my fair time with it i i went on off on good rates and I, I wrote everything off of my mind that just annoyed me um if you could have seen the post-its that i used for this i already put them out because i just don't want to have the memory um yeah but basically, this book uses a lot of violence for the sake of it, for just turning hats, for having a shock moment. It is really, really surface level. The characters are absurdly one-sided. Then there, I had some issues with the world that was portrayed. I just couldn't get my head around what kind of world they were living in, because there was just so much wrong with the system behind this town behind this city i don't know the, the old city and then also the fucking story just went from a to b there was no reasons for nobody to do anything they were in a tunnel going from this door to this door and this is an exaggeration they did not really do that that's just me i'm going into vent mode again so no i'm just no i'm moving on from this Move, moving on okay <sighs> Okay, next point. I'm gonna do that quickly because, like, I feel the emotions coming back to me and, and I don't want to be in this place anymore, okay? So the third point um, is the thing that a lot of YA books do that have heroic characters. They kind of just throw their heroes into situations and all of a sudden they are just perfect at it. They don't need to train, they don't need to learn, they don't... they're they just naturals. And this can be in some situation with a skill for example okay that can happen why not i mean they still would need a little bit of of practice but you could be a natural in that but with something like heroic features um something like a personality growth that happens over time in my head is nothing to be just really good at from zero to 100 like, you can't just like go to sleep broken, wake up and then be this wholesome person, for example. This is ridiculous to me. But this was definitely not the only book that did this. I'm just mentioning it. So, yeah, never mind. Okay. And finally, to get this over with, um, yeah, the relationship between Alice and Hatcher. <sighs> not one second was I rooting for them because girl you're falling for a boy that has killed or allegedly killed um five people for god's sake like this is a total rat can't you see the problem with this he's a lunatic in some people's eye maybe not in yours but in some people's eyes my you might be a lunatic as well so anybody can like that if they want to for me it was just this and the contrast that she was kind of a character in a story that was fighting against patriarchy um and 
still she was so dependent on this man who also always claimed that she kind of belonged to him that she was his which also the rabbit did and she was pissed about it she was like no i'm not the rabbit's property i'm my own person but as soon as hatcher does that she's like oh yeah i'm his so you know, on hindsight i'm surprised that i didn't give it one star to be honest but okay it was like at the beginning it, i was entertained i have to say um yeah i hope that was not too much of a rant i really try to not do that but you know sometimes your emotion just gets the better of you so <sighs> what can you do i'm going to get my lamp again because it's starting to get dark <laughs> okay next up i read Coraline by neil gaiman i listened to this as an audiobook there was this a collaboration of Neil Gaiman with the New York Public Library where he and uh, other authors slash like actors were reading uh, specific chapters of Coraline. Uh, starting off with Neil Gaiman and I joined really late to the party, I joined the last day, but I managed to catch up and got to listen to Dakota Fanning's uh, part of the reading. So I was really thrilled um, and I gave this whole thing five stars. Neil Gaiman will always possess a piece of my heart. Like listening to this book was being in my comfort zone for me. There's no other way to describe this and nothing more to say about this. So I'm going to move on with uh, Sleep No More by P.D. James, which is this little book. Uh, it is a collection of short stories <sighs> and I did not notice although it says something like six murderous tales on the side of um, the title um, and this was in the horror aisle um, and the only thing that wasn't Stephen King so I gladly picked it up it was like yes a new offer to discover amongst the fields of the genre of horror yeah it turned out it wasn't horror it was just misplaced yeah this basically says tension on the price tag so <laughs> i just didn't look i guess yeah I, I don't know what to tell you about this it was just not what i expected it's a little bit agatha christie meets roll doll yeah it has a little bit of an edge to it yeah with short stories there's this thing that there will always be stories that i liked and stories that i did not like uh, next up it's, is American Dirt and I've talked about this, uh, I've made a video about this book. Um, I really liked it, I gave it four stars. Uh, it's a story in which you follow uh, a mother and a son uh, becoming migrants and fleeing from Acapulco to the United States of America and there's nothing more I want to say about it because as I said in my other video I encourage you to, if you want to read the book, know as little as possible about the story. Yeah, I would recommend it to Americans, no, to everybody, to everybody. Like, I would recommend it. I just uh, recommend it. There you go. You have a recommendation. Read it. Um, no, you don't have to read anything if you don't want to. American Dirt to me is um, thought-provoking, it is um, engaging, it is really well crafted um, from a writing point of view. I thought the story, but especially the characters, were really really well made. It's just really hard for me to talk about this book without giving away too much. Um, I just have to say uh, it is one of my favorite reads so far this year. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll just leave it at that. Uh, so I'm going to get to my final book, which is Helix. So Mark Ellsberg is really one of my probably most um, detested authors. I don't know. I listened to Blackout before I read Helix and I just couldn't stop laughing. This was like Blackout was my first one star review, I think, of this year. 
if not entirely. No, it's not entirely, but of this year. Um, I'm not here to talk about black health because this is like just another level and I'm not ever going to get back to this. But just to give you a base of where I'm coming from, I hated blackout. It was really illogical. It was super annoying. Um, the characters I hated, whatever. But yeah, I have a friend who actually enjoys those books. And even though I can't get my head around why he does so, I really respect that he does. Opinions are different and that's great. And, but one day I checked my Goodreads and I saw my friend updating his feed and yeah, he was reading Helix and it turned into a little conversation about how I should read it. Um, and then we could discuss the book. And stupid as I am, I felt like that this was a really good idea and that maybe like my first perception of the book wasn't quite right, like because it was an audiobook, something could have been wrong with the audiobook. So I felt like, okay, maybe if I get a physical copy, um, it will feel different. And also I thought like I could then mark everything specifically that I felt was disturbing me, so therefore I had um, a clearer view of what was actually wrong with it for me. I don't know. Uh, like in the beginning, I put a lot of marks in there, and then somewhere I stopped because I felt it was a little bit unnecessary to point out every line that I felt was like just straight up bullshit or obnoxious. I ended up liking this book more than I liked Blackout. I gave it two stars on Goodreads. Um, and this is mainly because of the fact that I think that his characters are not as annoying as they were in Blackout. A lot of people said that it was really well researched um, and I can't really argue with that. I just believe that the research that was done was really surface level. Like it was all presented in such an unbelievable way. It wasn't even a matter of um, the facts that were presented. It was just really illogical characters um, doing uh, illogical actions. It was just all over such a Hollywood cinematic cliche reasoning. Okay, what happens is that the US um, foreign minister dies uh, while he is uh, at a visit in Munich and at the abduction they uh, find out that there was some kind of bacteria responsible for this. At the same time there are some plants that are discovered that shouldn't be existing um, and some animals. I mean they should exist but they are kind of resistant against certain bacteria that they shouldn't be resistant to. Um, and then there's a couple that want to get a baby and they visit a clinic in California to hopefully get pregnant. And yeah, that's... It could have been a great book. It could have been super fascinating. It could have been original. But it turned out to be something that was just slightly dipping its toe into certain topics and then just dropped them without having talked about them really. Um, and yeah. I don't know, it also was about 100, 150 pages too long. There were so much unnecessary things going on uh, that did not in any way contribute to the story. But then again, there were so many things that were just left unsaid at the same time. So I felt like the author could have used the space and turned it into something that was actually worth reading and kind of a good ending uh, or adding things that were important but no he didn't he just it, yeah I don't know it felt unfinished uh, yeah uh, I don't have anything left to say so bye